one year. Okay. Um, our next speaker is Markus Feilner. He is, uh, was a Linux journalist, is author, and at, right now he works at SUSE as a team lead for documentation, leading a global team there. And now he, he gives a presentation about uh, how he loves contact and how he learns to debug problems with it. Okay. I think this is fine and I'm pretty understandable. Good. Hi, everybody. Hello. Yeah, first contact. I mean, uh, I don't think it is really a first contact for you or for me uh, neither. I've been using contact for a long time and I'm going to tell you why I really like it, why I think it is in on, at the same time very enterprise ready but at the other time not that much so or things connected to it not that much so that I had to learn how to fix my problems in uh, probably really ugly ways and I am ready to take every <laughs> every word from every every developer who, to, who might want to tell me don't do that and I yeah you will see good so I will uh, tell you a little bit about me about why KDE why contact which ver versions I use we've just seen that it is pretty new but that's just tumbleweed and um, my favorite, I will show you my favorite contact functions, which I consider important for enterprise users like me, and uh, some exceptionally outstanding gadgetry in contact that is directly connected to the letter, and the last block will be troubleshooting, and I'm ready for discussion about that. That's where I do the maybe ugly things, I don't know. It's all aut mostly autodidactic. I learned it as I went. I'll tell you why. So. That is me in my home, in my apartment, and as you can see, I'm wearing a Ubuntu hoodie on the top, a red hat, a Debian uh, base cap, and what you can't see, but here's a chameleon, so this is one of the rare red Suzy fleece shirts that we produced once, so, and I see myself like that because I, I started quite a long time ago with Linux. Um, I'm talking about uh, the these versions to get just to get that out of the way I have to this cable is a little bit too short good I'm talking about um, contact in version what is it 18 18 um, Akonadi the same version Baloo 548.0 and Akonadi console 18043 all of that is pretty recent from July 19 yeah and I'm using, of course, OpenSUSE. I'm using Tumbleweed, rolling release, and it's got the newest basis for uh, especially KDE and other applications that I could have. And um, I've started with SUSE in 1994. I, in the, yeah, as you could see with the picture, I used Fedora, Ubuntu, Mint, Debian, and other distributions, some of them for years, some of them just sh uh, shorter. I ran my own business, which I still own. I worked as a consultant and a journalist for Linux magazine. And I am uh, now team lead of 16 people who write documentation at SUSE in a growing team. And if you're looking for a job, I have to say that, of course, SUSE is hiring. We've got 300 open positions, and we grew to 1,400 people now from uh, the 800 that I started with in uh, 2015. And I'm still writing articles, I'm still doing talks, and lobbyism for open source, and I think Tumbleweed really rocks. Up there is a picture of me from our OpenSUSE conference in Prague this year. So this is the email basic setup. I have to go pretty fast because I only have 25 minutes if, I want, if you want to ask me questions. So the, 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 the slides are free to have, so I will jump over some things, but you can read it. My slides are always pretty full of text because I want to give you something to read for later also. <laughs> So I'm, I've been using Korea, Cyrus, and Dovecut. I uh, used Scalix, or the same product but different name, HP OpenMail or Samsung something, Microsoft Exchange, Citadel, Novell, Microfocus, GroupWise, OwnCloud, NextCloud, OpenExchange, and other CalDuff, CardDuff implementations. Currently, I have uh, four Dovecut server accounts in my contact, and it's uh, gigabytes of email. And some of the accounts I administrate, my, the, some of the Dovecut servers I do administrate my, on my own. The others are run by companies. I've written some articles for Linux Magazine 
uh, and others over the years. Uh, the first one was in 2007, a comparison of open source groupware. The second one was a comparison under the name of the Vier Musketiere. Sorry, so some of this is in, in German, screenshots also. But uh, um, the Vier Mus Musketeers were four mail clients on Linux. And uh, I also wrote a book about Scalix, but Scalix never really went open source, so that was sort of like a little bit of a failure. Great, great software, but sadly not open source. Mm, yeah, despite all the cracks that turned up in uh, KDE in contact, I just say that when I say the magical number four, you will all know what I'm talking about. Despite all of that, I, I stuck with contact. I tried th uh, Thunderbird and Claws in the years of the of KDE4 and when Akonadi didn't, didn't really work, but I came back later. Um, because, in my opinion, it has so many great features that I regularly use in my environment. Import, export, smart setup wizards, automatically archive mails and data, templates, drafts for new mails, snippets, autocorrect, and heaps of configuration options like per folder settings, mailing lists. You, I guess if you're using it, you know most of that. For the others, try it. Um, I absolutely like the way it handles encryption with PGP. I haven't used SMIME much, but I really like it. I think it is among the mail clients that are available, the best and easiest um, way to use and to, to introduce people to using it because they get at the same time get an understanding of what's going on and they can really use it. And uh, what I really like a lot is how it integrates with the standard tools of KDE and also with Cleopatra and GPG in the background. Um, and it, in, in a, one point where the quality may vary is it integrates with the communication service. I call it communication service because it's not only groupware. In fact, Contact is the only groupware client on Linux. But the service, I mean, I wouldn't call Owner or Nextcloud uh, or Google or Facebook a groupware server. It's just services that they offer. And um, I talked today with someone that, who has seen the current state of the MS Exchange connector, which uses um, the web, uh, the web protocol. What's his name again? Web. Huh? No, no, not web. They're from um, the web access. Uber. That was right. I think it was that. Or was Uber? Was it? Was it before? Is there a newer one? Doesn't matter. It's it it works pretty well, but there is problems with Microsoft's implementation. That's what the last thing what I heard from a developer. But Basically, you can integrate all of these services in contact. And here you see, that's the screenshot from integrating an email um, server. The Microsoft Exchange is connector already integrates also appointments and calendaring. And that's, this is the calendar, add a calendar. And you can see you have Facebook and Google Calendar and, and arbitrary iCal, whatever you want. So I'm very happy with that. Another thing I'm using extensively, and I've also written an, a long article, I think it's seven pages on that, is SIEF, server-side email filtering. To my knowledge, the only standardized server-side language, small language, for filtering. And that is something, I did lots of groupware migrations, and that is something that everybody forgets in groupware migrations. People forget to calculate how much time their employees have to spend in the migration and new setup of their email filters. And Sieve is the only one. I, I don't have that issue because I just choose another. I went to Dovecut when Dovecut could do Sieve. Why should I do why should I change before? And this interface in my to my knowledge is the best interface around. Second maybe round cube, but that's only web based. You can click, click, click new filters and they are stored on the server and you can access them via a file, an I.O. file, um, uh, an I.O. client, but, sorry. Hmm? And we are an I.O. slave also from, from, from Dolphin. Huh? Just type sieve dot dot slash slash and your name at server and you see the files uh, that are on the sieve server and you can just open them. But this, why? This is so much better. The same thing Sorry. <coughs> the same thing that is um, 
exclusive exclusive to um, contact is how they um, is the integration of IMAP folder sharing. So if you know a little bit about IMAP, you know that every folder or mailbox on an IMAP server can have access rights. So I can grant, if we have an account on the same server, I can grant you the access to read, write, delete, and some other things on, yeah, append, append yeah. Uh, read, write, append, or all writes to a um, mailbox or folder on my server. That, me, that makes it so easy to work together. I'm using that at work with colleagues. We share one folder for project. <coughs> then, um, I think the benefits of KDE are, I, my, I mean, I'm running through open doors here, I guess. Um, the search, um, a Kanadi search, this is also, you see now we're getting directly into troubleshooting. Um, the desktop search, just hit Alt F2 or click on an empty spot on the desktop and start typing. And it also your emails and everything will be searched and presented to you. That is amazing. It <coughs> and recently it works pretty well. Um, now it's Baloo, it used to be Nepomuk, but Baloo indexes, mails, attachments, everything. And I, when I start writing a new email, I, start, I write your name and I will find about five or six email addresses of you, even though we probably have never exchanged directly an email. But your name with your email address at whatever company you've ever worked will be in some of the documents, some of the PDFs, some of the mailing lists on my system. So I don't need to know your email address. I don't need an address book anymore. Since about 10 years, I'm not actively maintaining or using an address book. I'm totally relying on Akunadi and Baloo, and it works for me with all the hassle. OK. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not stupid there, but I know there's problems. But I convinced several of my colleagues to go to contact, have a look at it with all the due, um, with all care that they have to take, because some of the things, as we will see, are might need some work, especially in my size of usage. Um, I, I, I use contact almost completely with the keyboard, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that that would be like like I'm I'm totally out of the concept of of uh, managing an address book. <laughs> it's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You have to show me. That's cool. Um, I'm using it completely with my keyboard. So when I'm when I'm uh, uh, <coughs> for example when I when a new mail comes in, I want to move it to the academy folder. I just type M. A K A return. M is for move. When I'm in the when I'm in the list of, of mails, M is for move. Then the, the filter pops up and the folder list and I type A K A, then the, the Academy folder is, is highlighted, return and the mail is there. That is something that people don't believe when that, that is something that the MUD people won't believe about KDE. Hmm. And uh, the extended, oh yes, and at home and at work I've got three monitors and uh, believe it or not, my contact is spread over two monitors constantly and the edit, the mail uh, window is on the third monitor. So I have the list of uh, folders, the list of emails on one uh, HD monitor and on the, and the contact f uh, application spans two monitors. It is always opening like that. Because I have the, I can read an email on one monitor. I have the list and the mailing, the, the mail, the list of folders and list of mails on the second monitor, and an editor will pop up on the third monitor. So I have always total overview. And with the extended settings of, of KWIN, I can just make that permanent. This is the feature. It's an extended setting in the window properties. In this case, for example, just for the fun, 13,000 wide, 7,000 high. I mean, I don't have that time. That, I don't have stacked stacks of 4K monitors, but so that was the first half. I think I'm quite good in time. Oh, not the first half. That was the the praise, and now we're coming to the to the stuff. You know this, I guess. It's uh, it's something stalled. Yeah, the the folder isn't isn't fetched. It's like your your internet connection stopped working or whatever. You don't know what to do, and yes, it still happens sadly, or 
just to, what happened just today up here, sending was successful, but the message could not be moved to the folder send for send messages. So I, the message probably reached the people I was sending it to, but why on earth couldn't it send it into this folder? So I tried um, an add-on module in contact to protocolize the protocol to log all activities. And I haven't found out what the expert plugin does. Maybe some dev can tell me. But the protocol is pretty fancy because I can see, OK, okay I stopped moving of the message. That is the protocol. You have to restart contact. But bar. Um, I stopped it. I, I stopped the, the move of the message. Then I started again. And, but it only said, didn't work. So it, there may be situations where this helps, but this one, it didn't help. Um, <coughs> usually when you, run it, when you ru keep running into problems like this that don't solve itself, here's a little how-to that I learned what to do um, to fix that. I mean, some of you will maybe say, don't do that, Marcus, you can't tell them that, but hey, it works for me. <laughs> and I'm not Docker. <laughs> So I s start and stop Akonadi server. We'll come to that in a second. The Akonadi server in the background with Akonadi control. You run Akonadi FSTK, Akonadi check while it's running. You can run Akonadi control vacuum. That's sort of like packs, as I understood it. Packs the Akonadi database. Then you restart contact. You maybe even restart KDE or reboot the machine just to get a plain uh, playing field. It's not the way we usually do, but I've learned this may be helpful. Also because constant updates, the rolling release, Thunderbird, and you don't know if it's just because some old libraries are still in the memory being used somewhere or a kernel is <laughs> updated or whatever. Um, you have a recreate index function in the folder, in the folders uh, um, uh, menu. You can unsubscribe from this folder locally. There's local subscriptions and server-side subscriptions. So if you unsubscribe and subscribe again, this will make contact rebuild the cache for this folder if there's something wrong in the cache. And you can use Akonadi console to recreate the IMAP cache too. I will show you these things within, with short screenshots. And um, you should check with another machine if it's not a problem of the IMAP server, of course. Yeah? If all of this fails, you've got a problem. <laughs> so here's Akonadi control, or the Akonadi CTL. Um, most important features are the commands at the beginning. Start, stop, restart, status, and then vacuum and FSCK. Huh? I never used instances. I never had to use it. This is what it does. You, you see here in the middle. So these are screenshots that I took during the last days when uh, some things went wrong. And I thought, OK, I can use the screenshot for the speech, for the presentation. Maybe it's helpful. So <coughs> what you see here is I did an Akonadi FS check, F check, and uh, it said, OK, I found 53,000 external files, um, cleaning up missing external files. And then he starts, OK, here's one thing that is, that he misses an external file. Um, but that's. That's, that's happening regularly for me. I don't know why, if it's just because I have some 16 gigabyte of mails in, in five accounts, and that is maybe a setup that is not that common for Akon Hardy for testing. I don't know. But it, it keeps happening for me. And in most cases, Agonadi control, control FSCK can fix that in my setup, in most cases, but not always. You know, when you set up an, uh, an IMAP account, you have the choice between what used to be called offline and online mm -hmm, IMAP. Mm -hmm. now, nowadays, it's called something like I local cache. I use both cash. of them. Uh -huh. and, uh, they, they work very differently. And actually, the, the one that is mostly tested is nowadays the default, which is to have a local cache. Yes. The online it's IMAP I'm thing, I'm yes, I'm yeah. not really sure how that works. I, I use the local cache as a standard and the, the uh, mails online just for my group buys server. So the group by server, that's not really, that doesn't have many emails. I use full mail download as a standard. Because right, the, the, the way I, ins well, I'm not an Akonadi expert, but I, I put my hands into it a, a mm. few times. Th these files are like attachments to your emails. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it's online, it doesn't really matter, right? Because yeah. you're not going to get them again. 
it's gonna get them it's... again. I haven't yeah. had any consistent problems. Right, exactly. That's also why I said have a look at the mail server. Huh? If something is corrupted there, huh? because yeah. it's a file. It's, it's, I also thought it's an external file. It must be an attachment or something. So I went on the mail server from a different machine. I could see there are there's no Akonadi. The sure, sure. This is about your local cache anyway. So if anything gets lost, it's in your local cache, not on the mail server anyway. Yeah, uh, it's Akonadi, right? Yeah. Um, if you have sincere doubt in your Akonadi instance, there is a tool that's called Akonadi Test, and uh, it. What it does, it is it creates a cache and a lot of stuff, and you have to be careful because it will create this stuff in uh, TMP. I did. I, there's some more mistakes in that. I did a mistake in there. This is yeah. about this is about running unit tests. I don't think it's going to help you with your user problems. This it, is about it's, it says it says in its um, in its description that it's uh, the tool that the tool is there to test whether your Akonadi setup. Is, co is correct. I don't think that's what it is. This okay. Is about running uh, unit tests. I, 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 I filled my root partition yesterday with it. You see that I, I was running it and then I stopped it. And the, the, the second the DU is, is some 10 minutes later because I, my system started to, to behave strangely. And then I found out that my root partition was full because the TMP wasn't in a special partition. It's a laptop, yeah? And uh, I found that there were 12 gigabyte of, of Akanadi test runner. The cache that it built up was 12 gigabyte big. I don't know why, but so that I just said this was something that I noticed yesterday. Yeah, don't run it. Uh, <laughs> we have another thing that's Baloo. That's the, the successor to Nepomuk, the, the search indexer, the indexer for the search engine now. And it's got some interesting, it's got this principle, the same commands, status, uh, start, stop, restart. And uh, interesting is monitor, because indexing is a process, you, you know, it takes a lot of resources. It can take a lot of time. You can imagine that the 16 gigabyte of emails that I have take a lot of time. I usually have, have it run overnight for the, for the indexing. And the monitor command is pretty interesting because it gives you some output about what's, what's going on right now. So, and the best tool, which I must say its capabilities are beyond my reach <laughs> in terms of understanding what's going on. But the best debugging tool is Agonadi Console. This is also where you can do the, where you can make the biggest mistakes and destroy things, I assume. That's why there is this warning. But <coughs> you have a debugger with lots of detail. And that's where I would ask some developer if the other file missing or whatever um, uh, mistakes persist. So you've got a debugger that you, you have to activate all of these functions, monitoring, debugging, and everything. But it's, it's very helpful if you know what you're doing. You can also clear the cache from here. You can dump things to XML and other things. So you can really sort of like low level access and get help for the, uh, for the server. And now is the hard way. That's what I had to do several times, especially after, then, then after KDE4 and later. Um, stop Akonadi, remove the TMP files for Akonadi. The ca the, the, there is um, often some, or there used to be stuff wrong in there, and make, uh, have Akonadi do a, claim, a plain, uh, plain start. Yeah? And uh, then I start Akonadi console and contact at the same time to see if I have any troubles. Helped in some cases. And this is, and this is what, um, yeah, this is a horrible script, as you can see, that, that, that sort of grew over the years to get for testing purposes and for Linux magazine articles and for setups to get uh, rid of all prior settings around contact, KDE PIM, Kmail, and Akonadi on my system. So. What I did is, I was, uh, lots of lots of files in, in a variety of places that aren't correct anymore today, but that's that was a script. I made this a script because I needed it that often. That says a lot, I think. Um, I wanted to put this disclaimer here: the dangers of file deletion, because I will give you the the paths where stuff is in and config files are in. I'll be done in just th three slides. Um, you may lose all local changes that have not been synced to your server if you delete and mess with Akonadi cache and files. That's a given. That's just normal. Huh? That, um, work around copy recent mails to local mail folder before proceeding. That mostly works. 
So copy the mails from the last day to, a, to the local mail folder and then mess with Akonadi because you still have the, the, the secure state on the IMAP server. So then that's what I learned. I can delete all of it and give it a fresh start and then copy the mails that I, that I tried to send or that I sent in the last days in there. Um, what's more work is that you lose all the settings, all those wonderful per folder settings, for example, because the folders have a name, but they also have a, a hash or a string in the configuration files. It's a number, as far as I remember, and they are identified by the number. So contact gets irritated by that. The sent folder will suddenly be a completely different folder. It's not that it's doesn't find a folder, it will you just use a different one. I haven't found out why. And the same applies to draft and templates. And but for all the other folders you will just lose the settings because the folder doesn't exist anymore, so you have to set it up again. <coughs> and yeah. There is uh, quite a number that can be quite quite a, quite some steps that can be automated like I did with the other script. And some things some config files can just be copied back and forth, also when you set up a new machine, like identities or mail transports that make your life easier so you don't need to, to enter the mail server again if you don't want to use the wizard. And uh, this is my current state of the directories and files that are being used by Akonadi and Contact. If, if, if you have a look, that, that should be at least on my Tumbleweed system. Yeah? It's cache Akonadi, that's the Akonadi cache, so if if you delete it with, with Akonadi console, huh, that's where this happens. If you do an RMRF in this directory, you just pull the cache away from Akonadi, and it has to, but it will recreate it automatically when it starts again um, with the problems of the folder names. Um, I don't know what exactly is in TMP Akonadi, but it can be a lot. <laughs> it's the temporary files. and. Uh, on my on my desktop machines, I have this uh, as a in 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 a temp tempfs in a large tempfs file, so that it will be automatic deleted on reboot. As I mentioned, if you if you stop running Akonadi test because it's not meant for end users, the only thing you'll find in TMP Akonadi is a socket for MySQL, and that's about it. There is really just like four tiny well, they are zero size files because they are sockets. That's all there is in TMP. Yes. Everything else was the crap from Akonadi test. Why, how on earth did there, could there be 12 gigabyte when I run the Akonadi test? Because you're, okay, if That's you, the only if case that there might be yes, more exactly. files. But Akonadi test is supposed to be used from uh, the unit test framework and then it's probably set up with different parameters than what you do by just running it yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. not supposed to do that, but if, if you don't do that, then it's really just okay. uh, socket files. So then we have config files. We have um, the main mail storage in local share Akonadi. Yeah? We have the index of the desktop search engine in local share blue, and we have the local mail and local mail folders. folders. Correct? Obviously. Um, so I'm, I am done. I just wanted to give you some sources of information. I think we should, we as KDE should do something there, but this is a good start. And so I'm ready for questions if there is time left. Uh, we don't have much time, but if there's one small short question with a short answer. And I'm, I wanted just one more disclaimer. I'm not a developer. I'm not a coder. I've been a user since tw for something like 20 years. And I only filed, I think, one sim single bug in this whole realm. Because with the systems that I've been using, and especially with Tumbleweed, most of the bugs got fixed faster than I could file one. <laughs> in my experience with the Microsoft Exchange uh, plugin, uh, it works only when you initialize it. And for the calendar, it only works read-only. But if you reboot the system, it doesn't work anymore. Okay. Ever. Okay. That's m my experience, and that was a few months, maybe a year ago. Okay. I'm hoping it's better now. Haven't tried it yet. Have you tried it recently? No, I just came across it this week, and I just learned this week that there is a new one. I hadn't expected it. I just came also ch just came across it because colleagues of mine had used evolution with an um, exchange connector and it failed or has big troubles since the last update that Microsoft did in July 17 or something like that. So that's only why I came across it at all. 
So you mentioned those sieve rules, the filter rules, and I didn't quite understand. Is this a local feature of contact, or is there just a certain protocol to communicate with a certain oh, mail server? It's a, it's a front end to uh, here, here is it. It's a front end, a local editor with syntax check that that uses this sieve protocol to to put down a file. A okay. text file it's on the server. It's still server side. Okay, thank yes, you. It's server side filtering. This is just the GUI to use it. Behind you. Uh, no, we have no time now. Right? So, no. Uh, perhaps you can ask later one later on. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you.